Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, we are going to discuss about an AWS serverless data analytics pipeline for file processing. Okay, so in our day-to-day -day life, we encounter different source system in data engineering pipeline design. Some sources can be real-time data source. Some sources can have data coming as file format and some data in source system are sitting in RDBMS like Oracle, SQL Server, etc. And we use several big data tech stack or AWS services for different different use cases to ingest the data in our cloud data lake or S3. Like for example, if you consider real-time data source, we use HTTP collection endpoint. Maybe that is created using API gateway or maybe that is created using MuleSoft or this kind of tool. We create an API, we expose that to the real-time data source and using post request, we ingest those data in Kinesis data stream and eventually from the data stream, the data gets ingested in our data repository, which is nothing but our S3 data lake. Okay, maybe in middle sometime Kinesis Firehose is sitting, which is helping in batching the records and flushing with certain time interval or when certain MB of data gets accumulated, which we discussed in our previous video in detail. You can check the description link to explore more about the Kinesis family. Okay. Now the another source which is very popular is RDBMS where the data is sitting in some sort of SQL database like Oracle SQL Server etc. And a very popular ingestion tool in this particular use case is Apache Scoop. Using Scoop either in full refresh manner or incremental way we can pull the data from this kind of tabular sources and ingest in S3 in different different format that can be Avro, Parquet, CSV, TSV etc. Okay. And another very popular source is file based source. Especially if your project has some dependency on third party vendor company or partner company, they generally share the files and that sometime we process using AWS Glue or this kind of ETL tool. And after processing, we can write process data in our S3 data lake. Right? So today in this particular video, we are specifically going to focus on this particular pipeline. Okay. That is, the data is coming as files from various source system and we will basically convert them to optimize big data file format and store in S3 location. Okay. How to do that? That we are going to explore today in this video. Okay. So for this particular project, we are going to implement this particular data pipeline. Okay. So let's try to explore the various parts of this data pipeline. First, we are having E that is extraction layer or ingestion layer. Then we are having P which is basically transformation layer where we apply all the business logics on our data and then the last layer is L or load layer or publish layer okay where we persist the data for long term storage in our S3 data lake as well as we can store the data in some sort of cloud data warehouse platform like in this particular use case we are using Snowflake as our destination cloud data warehouse okay right so now let's try to understand how this particular file based ETL pipeline is working. Okay. So here we are having user that you can consider as third party partner company or vendor company who are sending some zip files. Okay. And they are sending the zip files to a SFTP location. So for this particular pipeline, we are going to use AWS transfer for SFTP service whose backend will be nothing but our S3. Why the backend we are using as S3 instead of EFS because S3 has lot of advantages. It is almost nearly unlimited data we can store. So there is no problem with respect to storage and even using S3 event notification, we can trigger various AWS services, right? So for this kind of advantages, for this particular SFTP backend, we are going to use S3. And this is called as landing layer where the data is getting landed from the external company as raw format, okay? So they are uploading the zip file. So here the zip file will be landed. Within this particular zip file, there can be multiple CSV files. Sometimes it can be only one CSV file. Sometimes it can be two, three, five, n number of CSV file can be present. Okay. So as a first step, what we need to do, we need to unzip this particular zip file, right? That will be step one. So here I can write, we will unzip. Okay. Now this can be a CSV file, but with respect to big data world, CSV is not a good file format. So as a step two, what we will do, we will convert this to parquet file format because it is columnar data where the execution will be faster and it applies several compression techniques using which big data can be stored in a smaller area, right? 
So here, the, as part of second step, we will convert the CSV data after unzipping. What data we will get that is CSV that we will convert to parquet. Okay. So here, parquet data we have converted and that we will write in another S3 location. And as part of our last step, we will load the data in our this particular Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse platform. Okay. So how we are going to do that? So as soon as zip file will be landed using S3 event, we can trigger one AWS Lambda where our Python code will be running. It will basically do the unzip operation and it will write all the CSV files after unzip whatever we will be getting in another S3 location that let us term as curated layer. Okay. Now here in curated layer, we will have multiple CSV files. Now those CSV files will convert to parquet using AWS queue. So the same lambda which is basically unzipping this zip file that will trigger the glue job once the unzip operation is complete. This particular glue job will read all the CSV files whatever we got as part of unzip operation and it will convert them to parquet and it will write in another S3 layer which is called as publish layer. Okay, right. So in this publish layer when the data will be written, we need to ingest the data in real time to our Snowflake TV. So for that, what we can use? We can use Snowpipe. We can set up an SQS event notification that as soon as some parquet file will be written in this particular published layer, one event will be published in this SQS. That SQS via Snowpipe will execute that copy command and that copy command will load the data in our Snowflake table, right? Which is basically an internal table, not an external table. So this is basically what pipeline we are going to implement from scratch today in this particular video. I hope the data flow architecture is clear to you. Now, without any further delay, let us directly jump into the implementation section. So here as a first step, what we are going to do, we need to create S3 location, like one S3 bucket we will be creating. Within that, we will be having three different folders, one for landing zone, one for curated zone, one for published zone. Okay, right. So I will do that quickly. So maybe let's consider the bucket name is this one. So I will go to AWS management console and I will log in. And here I will go to S3. And here I will create the bucket. I will give the bucket name. Keeping all other properties unchanged, I will create the bucket. Within that bucket, we will create three folders. Landing, curated and publish. So let us quickly do that. So here I will first create my landing folder. Then curated folder. And then here publish here folder will create. Okay, cool. So the S3 locations are created. Now as part of the next step, we will create our SFTP server, which is basically used for file transfer from third party to our AWS system. So here I can search for SFTP, okay, and AWS transfer family, it will open. And here I can click on create server, I can choose SFTP, I can click on next, let it be default and publicly accessible as of now I am keeping as it is, I am going to next. So here I will click on next and here I will create the SFTP server. Okay, right. So currently it is showing no user. So that particular partner company or vendor company or third party company when they want to use this SFTP server, they should be tagged with one user, right. So the user will be creating, let the SFTP server become online. Till then what we will do, to access the SFTP server and write the data in S3, we need an IAM role, right? So that role we will create. So for that, this is the policy. This policy I will be sharing in the description box or in the comment section so that you can basically change this and parallelly practice on this, okay, right? So here I will paste this in a new notepad++ file. And here I need to change two things that is one this location and another location is this one. Here I need to provide that this particular SFTP server in which S3 bucket need to write the data. Okay, that particular bucket get access, put access, delete access, this kind of access I need to provide, right? So in our case, the SFTP server S3 backend should be this particular bucket. So I will basically change that accordingly. Okay, these two locations I have changed and our policy is ready. I will copy the policy and I will create a policy by going to IAM location. Okay. So here I will search for IAM and here I will go to IAM role 
and here I'll go to policy and I'll create a policy. So here in permission section, you can opt for JSON and here I can paste my JSON data. I can click on next. The policy name I have to give demo pipeline YT. So this name I have given and I'll create the policy. Okay, the policy is created. Now I need to attach the policy to a role. So I'll create the role. So this particular policy, what it is doing? This is giving the access to read, write, delete, etc. to this particular S3 bucket for this particular SFTP server, right? So here I need to choose the use case for which I am generating this particular role is SFTP. SFTP is coming under transfer family. So I will search for transfer, okay? So here I will click on next. And then here I need to find the policy. So this is the policy just now what I have created, which is having that S3 access to this particular bucket. Okay. I'll click on next and role name. I am keeping the same as our policy name and I'll create this particular role. Okay. Right. So with this, our role is created. So that way the SFTP server can write the data in our S3 location. Right. Up to this, I hope it is very simple. Now let's see what is the state of our SFTP server. Still it is starting or it became online. Let's see. So the server is now online. Now what we'll do, we'll create an user within this particular SFTP server. Okay. So for this user, I will click on add user, user name. So this kind of name I am giving, right? Home directory. So in home directory, I need to choose the S3 bucket. So here in our case, this is our S3 bucket where the SFTP server will flush the data. Okay. And what is the folder where I want to give the access. So this particular user or third party partner company will upload zip files in landing there, right? So that's why I will choose the landing zone. Okay. So here I am just restricting the access to this landing zone only. Cool. And I will add this particular user. Okay. So, so here role we need to choose. So just now we created what role that one I'll be choosing. Maybe I can refresh and choose. So this is the role and I think pretty much it and I can add this one. Okay. So the user is added. Now for this particular user to access the SFTP server, we need to provide the public key and private key, right? So that one we will create as part of its next step. So to create the public private key, I am going to use my local system only. Maybe in this particular folder, I can open the command prompt and I can start Windows subsystem for Linux. Okay. This is very handy, especially if you are working in Windows system and you want to execute some Linux command. So here I will generate the public and private key. So I enter the file name, demo yt test I can give and I don't want to provide anything else and that's it. So here you will see here in this directory, the public key and private key got created. Okay. If you want, you can execute ls and here you will get the public key. All I need to do, I need to basically set up the public key in our SFTP server for that user. So I will copy this particular SSH public key and I will choose this particular user and click on add key. Okay. I will add this particular key for this user. Now let's test it out whether using this particular user, we can flush some files to our S3 location or not. Okay. So in our case, S3 location is landing layer this one. So what I will do here, this is our SFTP server. This is the endpoint. I will choose that. And here I will use WinSCP for testing. So here I'll click on new site. Hostname I will provide username in our case is basically this one. I will choose that. And password, I am having the private key file just now what I created. So I will choose that one. Okay. So here are all files I can choose. And this is our private file. I will open this. I will click on OK. I will click on Save. And click on OK. And click on OK. And then log in. Okay. And I need to click on Yes. So here it is open. So here in the left hand side, this is our windows and in the right hand side, this is our SFTP server whose backend is S3 landing layer. Okay. So let's see whether it is really working or not. Maybe one particular CSV file, maybe the vendor company tried to upload. 
this particular error related to permission is fine you can abort okay so it is uploaded so let's see whether in landing layer the data went or not so let's refresh our landing layer and see data came okay so that means from this particular diagram the ingestion layer is ready here the user is set up sftp server is ready whose backend is landing layer using im role it is able to write the data in s3 location okay now as soon as the data will be written in landing layer we need to trigger one aws lambda that lambda will unzip that zip file and write in curated layer also it will trigger the glue job okay so let's see the lambda code it is basically very simple we are importing boto3 because boto3 is needed to interact with different aws services whether it is triggering the glue job or reading the files from s3 etc and to unzip this zip file we need this particular module and here also we are importing os and json and the glue job name what our lambda will trigger what we are going to create to convert from csv to parquet is basically this particular one i'll create that no need to worry and here what we are doing this is our main lambda handler so we are iterating in all the event records we are extracting the file names bucket names and all these things as a overall algorithm what we are doing here first we are downloading that particular file from s3 to a temporary directory in the lambda execution environment okay using s3 dot download file so once the zip file is downloaded in our lambda execution environment we are using extract all method to unzip that particular zip file in the temporary directory okay now once the zip file is unzipped within that particular zip file we can have n number of csv files right and all the csv files are now sitting in lambda execution environment now we need to upload this all csv files back to s3 so that the glue can read because glue cannot access the lambda local execution environment right so what we are doing here we are iterating in that particular unzipped location we are extracting all the files and we are using s3 upload file to upload the file back to s3 after unzipping but this time we are uploading in the curated zone okay that's the only thing and here s3 is basically nothing but our boto3 client what we have created obviously i hope you can easily understand that to set up the s3 integration this lambda should have s3 read write access right and once these particular files are unzipped and written back to our curated zone what the lambda will do the lambda will call the glue job so to call the glue job here we are creating a boto3 client for our glue and we are using start job run method to run our glue job now the glue job need what files from curated layer it need to read and convert to parquet because only those csv files it need to convert to parquet not all the csv files whatever is present in our curated zone right so for that what we are doing here there is a particular variable called file names here i am basically tracking all the files whatever the lambda is unzipping and uploading to s3 curated zone okay and that i am passing as argument to our glue job so that way our glue job will read only those specific csv files not others right and we are printing the response after triggering the glue job and we are returning hello from lambda we can return any dummy thing not a problem okay so this is pretty much our lambda code so i will quickly copy that and i will open aws management console in a new tab and i will quickly set up my lambda So here create lambda function demo yt unzip sftp demo and then here i can choose python execution environment as 3.11 and here i will create the function okay so here i can paste my lambda code and i can simply click on deploy and as part of next step i can go to configuration i will increase the timeout to maybe 2 minutes 3 second and i'll save this and also i will go to permission section and i need to add certain policies to this lambda role number one policy is this particular lambda will read the files from s3 and write back to s3 after unzipping so s3 access it should be having so here i will go to attach policy and here i will search for s3 full access that one thing i'll be giving apart from that this lambda should be able to trigger the glue job also right so here i will search for glue job role also and here i will give this particular permission also to this particular lambda role okay cool it is configured now this particular lambda will be triggered from the landing layer right so let's set up the trigger so i'll click on add trigger till i i will choose s3 
here in our case the bucket is basically this particular one i will copy that and paste here in the bucket name the event type is all object create event prefix Pre in prefix we can mention from which folder we want to send the events only in, from landing layer we want to send the events because in the landing layer only the partner company will dump the zip files okay so let's focus on only landing layer events right so that one i am choosing i will acknowledge this and i will click on add okay cool so our lambda code is ready now as part of the next step what we are going to do here if you see increase the timeout for lambda which we have already done provide proper permission to the lambda role that also we have done now here is our glue job it is again a very simple PySpar code. We are doing all the necessary imports. And after that, we are reading the argument, which is basically we are passing from Lambda, the val1, which contain the list of file names, which the glue need to read and convert to Parquet, right? So that we are reading in Spark and then we are writing in Parquet file format in append manner in our publish there. Okay, right? So here, this is our glue job. I will basically open AWS management console in a new tab. And I will set up my glue job. Okay. So here I will search for glue. And here I can go to visual ETL. And here Spark script I can create. Here I can replace this code with my code and the job name. So here this particular lambda, if you see the lambda is triggering this particular glue job right so i am keeping the same as here job name and then here i can go to job details here the i am role i need to provide which is glue service role default i am giving and here in advanced setting i will increase the concurrency to 10 maybe so that if concurrently multiple zip files are getting landed from partner company the lambda can trigger multiple glue job accordingly okay right so this is 10 and pretty much all other properties we can keep default and I can save this one. Okay, right. So here our glue job is also ready. It will write the data in parquet file format in our publish layer. Now this snow pipe setup we have to do. For that, let us go to Snowflake. So as a first step, we are dropping a database. Then we are creating the fresh database. Then we are using this particular database. And here in our use case, we are going to play with ID data set. Okay. So I hope you already know that it is having default structure like ID as integer column, then sepal, then sepal with petal, then petal with a double data type and the class name is string data type, right? So accordingly, I have created the table schema and here I want to ingest the parquet data because this particular published layer data will be in parquet file format, whatever Glue will be writing, right? So accordingly, I am creating a parquet file format here and then as part of next step, we need to create a snow stage or external stage pointing to our publish layer okay so to create the external stage i am basically using access key secret key based authentication but in production system we should use im role based authentication i hope you already know that which i covered multiple times in my previous video now if i execute list stage currently here there is no data because in the publish layer if you see let me just show you the publish layer so here in this bucket, I will open curated layer in a new tab and publish layer also in a new tab. So here if you go to publish layer, here you see currently no data is there. And that's why our you know, snowflake when we are doing this stage, it is throwing no data, right? Now here we are going to create a pipe. In snow pipe, we are executing the copy command where we are flattening the data from variant, variant column. Basically, park data is nothing but variant column dollar $1. From there, we are extracting the different fields and then we are ingesting into our table using copy into command. Okay, very simple, which we already discussed multiple times. And now let's execute show pipes. If I execute show pipes here, it will give me the notification channel. This is basically this particular SQS queue, which we can set up for event notification. Okay, right. So here what I can do, I can set up the event notification in our S3 bucket. So here I can open the bucket in a new tab and I can go to property section and then here I can scroll below here the event notification tab is there. I can click on create event notification event name demo snowflake ingest something I have given all object create event I want to make sure and SQS queue the queue ERN I will be putting and I want to 
send all the event notification only from publish layer, right? So in prefix, I will put the publish layer, okay? So that way, all the publish layer event will be published to this SQS queue, and I will save the changes, okay? Right? So with this, our complete setup is ready. So let's see our table currently. So here, if you see, see let's start from this particular location when we are doing here currently, it is showing no data in this table because our snow pipe has ingested nothing because in publish let we have no data now let's experiment whether our pipeline is working or not so here what as a user will do will upload a zip file so let's create a zip file so here what i will do maybe this virginica and farsi color these two category csv files i will make a zip so here send to compressed folder so this is our zip file and what i will do the zip file i'll upload using sftp to s3 okay i'll click on about that way this is uploaded cool so let's see whether in landing layer the zip file came or not yes in landing layer zip file came now this particular zip file we have created using farsi color and farcinica these two files so now ideally this lambda should have been triggered and in curated layer farsi color.csv and farcinica.csv after unzipping it should be writing okay so let's see our curated layer if i refresh here see farsi color and farcinica these two csv files it has written even if you want you can go to monitor section and here you can check the logs in cloudwatch that the lambda got triggered in real time so here if you see just now all lambda got triggered if you open that here you will see that the glue job also got triggered successfully it has printed right so let's see whether our job is running properly or not because ideally after writing the unzip data it should trigger the glue job right so i will go to job run monitoring section and here see our glue job is running so what this glue job will do now the glue job will only read these two csv files from this curated zone and it will create a parquet file in our publish zone okay right so let's see whether its status is getting changed or not so it is still running ideally the lambda has sent this particular information if you see this glue job trigger response it is successful and files after unzipping are these two files farsicolor.csv farginica.csv so these two csv files we are sending from lambda to glue okay if you see this particular glue code the after getting the argument here we are splitting based on comma because whenever we send the argument that should be string that cannot be a list right so from lambda multiple file names we need to send as comma separated string and that string we are splitting converting to list here in glue job and then we are reading the csv files okay so here soon the glue job should be completing so here it is successful let's see in our publish layer the data got written or not yes the data is written now let's go back to our snowflake ideally what should happen that once in publish layer the parquet data is written the sqs event notification should have triggered the copy command using snowpipe and the data ideally should be ingested in our ids dataset table okay right so here see beautifully the data get ingested okay total 101 rows are there now what i will do maybe i will show you another demo just to show you incrementally the data is coming so setosa1 and setosa2 this particular two csv file i will make a zip so here send to complex folder so this is our new zip file and the user will upload this particular zip file sorry So here it is uploaded. Now what will happen that here if you see our landing layer, here if I refresh setosa1.zip file is there. Okay. Now from the setosa1.zip file, here in curated layer setosa1.csv and setosa2.csv should have been written. Okay. See, only these two are written and lambda will trigger glue job based on only these two. It is not like the glue job will return all the files, whatever is available as CSV format in curated zone, it will read all. No, because if it read all, these two files already processed. So again, reprocessing will happen and we might face duplicate record. So that's why the lambda is sending the file names as argument to the glue job that you convert from csv to parquet only these two files okay so now lambda has unzipped now our glue job should have been triggered let's see here you will see that our glue job is running so here it is running and once our glue job complete it will again write the data in our publish layer here see just now it has written the publish layer data 
1829 and this new data should be loaded in our id data set okay right so here still it's not ingested because snow pipe take some fraction of seconds so here you will see the id setosa category also came so this is how in real time we can process and ingest the files to snowflake i hope you understood this all the quotes and reference links or prerequisite video links i'll be sharing in the description box or in the comment section if you want you can go through that try to play with it then you will understand this particular pipeline in a better way this is all for my this video if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you for watching